And, and again, right, yes, that's right. And so, yeah. you know, it's kind of like, what, you know, what's going on there? What do you think is that big... Um, hold back or I don't know what what do you think is going on with yeah that? I don't yeah I don't think they specifically thought well you know um we're just gonna cast these are only these two Latin characters I you know I think that you know a lot of things get done in Hollywood and I would say Hollywood because it's you know it's what we always say but mm -hmm. really it's a Hollywood is a county <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> County you know um no I think what happens is that when people are making films, you know, they, they, they don't, they don't do things intentionally. They don't, they don't intentionally leave us out of the fray. The issue is I don't think we have enough uh, writers, you know, we don't have enough producers when it comes to trying to bring more Latin actors into the mix. Okay. Um, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, it's, it's a, it's a question of, you know, is it a Latin project or not? Well, typically I don't think we should ever say it's a Latin project. It's, the project could be about redemption. It could be about friendship. It could be a love story, a romance, who happen to have Latin characters in them. Mm -hmm. And I think that you can open yourself up to have more non-traditional casting, which would include even more Latin actors. And, you know, it's so monumental to make a film that there's a lot of input coming from a lot of places. Mm -hmm. And it would be great if someone had the courage to say, you know, this would be a very interesting to cast a Latin person but it has to come from an intelligent place. Do you think that the talents out there, do you think there are... Oh, yeah. you know, we've had... Listen, we did Dracula, okay? The first Dracula that came out um, with Bela Lugosi, right? Uh, they, Bela Lugosi and all the actors would leave during the day. I mean, uh, at night, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they, they would be shooting all day. And then at night, you would have these this Mexican you know, cast come in and recreate the same movie using the sets and the sounds of what they were doing. I mean, we've been, we've been in this business a very long time. We were huge in the silent era. Yeah. So this idea that there's this Latin wave coming and going, it's just preposterous. I think what happens is that people gain, gain the courage and realize we're viable, but it's other people telling us we're viable. I think what it is is that we... Who, the people who happen to be Latins in this business, we can't, we can't think of, oh, we're just Latins. Mm -hmm. you know, we have to bring everyone into the mix, but we must tell our stories. We must write those stories, yeah. but at the same time, not perpetuate our stereoty the stereotypes that have been put on, on us. And that's the key. You know, at the end of the day, you got to tell a good story, no matter what. I don't care if you're Latin or not. Right. You, know, you have to tell a good story. So what else are you wanting to do? I mean, what are you working on now? What what what's sure. in store for you? Uh, you know, I just just I mean, this, besides the Cowboys, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think you know, I'm I'm I, th you know, I'm a dir you know director at heart. You know, um, the, even though you know I don't get credit for some things. I mean, I worked on two other short short films that, you know, I should have gotten a, a, a directing credit, but that you know I didn't care about that. I wanted to tell a good story. But I am an, a director, and I think my next move would be to direct. A few more things on my own. I've co-directed things and I've co-written things, but I haven't done anything on my own yet. Okay. And I think that's what's coming up. But just recently, we were at the Sundance Film Festival for a film called Benavides Born, a mm -hmm. film that was shot in South Texas, and I was one of the supporting actors in that. And uh, it was a really proud moment to be up there in Park Cities and you know represent a story about a young girl who's trying to get out of the neighborhood and weightlifting is her ticket out and weightlifting in south texas is huge for girls and people don't know that really? so there you go yeah so there you go there's another story that people haven't told yeah. you know and i'm thinking it's a, the film's a, it's an empowering story uh, w with young girls latin girls it has a nuance to it because it takes place in south texas it's very culturally you know regional mm -hmm. and uh but yet it's a universal story and of course it made it to sundance you know it was it was a feature film in the feature film category and the dramatic competition it's already been picked up. It's now re going to be re-released as All She Can. So, you know, I think that, you know, for me, you know, I'm going to try to get myself in, into all sorts of projects. I'm not foreign to working on independent films, but I, you know, and blockbusters. But, you know, if I see somebody who's got a viable story, hey, my job is a, I'm an actor, you know. I'm a lunchbox actor. You know, I show up with my lunchbox. I'm ready to work, <laughs> you know. I mean, you know, I can't allude to anything else. So I mean, I know I ask a bunch of questions in one, when I, but so I do want to know though, how how did you decide this is what that you want to do? Oh, I want to do this. Um, gosh, uh, you know, I needed some. You know, I needed. Well, 
without making it so long, I wanted to get in this business because originally I'm from Mexico, and I was about mm -hmm. four years old when we came to this country. I was going on five, and uh, you know we lived in this, this little small trailer home mm -hmm. temporarily before my dad was, uh, tr you know, uh, sent to uh, Fort Worth to work. We lived in this trailer home, and my mom would sit me in front of the TV, and uh, all my teachers, all my English teachers, all my pop culture teachers were actors on TV, because that's how I learned how to speak English, was by watching TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a little shy as a kid, and it was scripts, and it was reading, and it was movies that I gravitated to, because it was their words that I would use to help me communicate my feelings. Okay. And that sort of manifested itself into me realizing, hey, I, I was born to be an actor. And it was a natural, it was a natural transition for me to become an actor. The problem was, you know, can I make a living at it? Yeah. And I think that, I think now with the reality TV and mm -hmm. the way the media is, everybody thinks they can do our jobs. Even people who are reporters or anchors or everybody thinks we can do this. <laughs> you know, we have to read prompters. You know, they, everybody thinks we could do what, you know, they can do what we do. Mm -hmm. And that's not true, you know. Uh, but you have to get trained, you know, you have mm -hmm. to be qualified. And you, and, and you have to make a living at it. You know, there's no such thing as dying for your art anymore. I don't believe in that. Yeah. I do love my art, but I darn it, you're going to pay me for it, you know, and I'm going to get paid for it. And that, that is a respectable, respectable way of thinking, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I got into it once I found out that, yeah, I can make a living doing this, but I have to be prepared, you know. Prepared. And yeah. And and I know they always say, you know, what is luck? You know, preparation meets opportunity. Yeah, not many opportunities, though, but darn it, you know, when that time shows up, yeah, you better be prepared. Yeah. You know. All right, uh, just one more question on the film festival. So, yeah, that's yes. what I was going like, to next. Besides the Skype thing, um, you know, what what else has been different about this festival for you since you've been to so many? What makes this one unique? For you? Well, you know, I have been to so many, and, uh, you know, uh, some of them have been dis disheartening, uh, only because, you know, when you use the word uh, Latino, uh, sometimes we pander to that concept. You know, what does a Latino mean? This has been probably one of the most intimate, humbling festivals I've ever seen because they don't allude to being something huge and massive and big and, and, and it's not Hollywood. Um, it, it doesn't have glimpses of Hollywood in it. Mm -hmm. They get to the core of the question, you know, what encompasses Latin films? What, you know, what does it take to be successful in this business? And then they, op you know, we've been able to open up dialogue about really key important questions about how we can move on to the next you know, the next level to make things better. And to have that kind of intimate dialogue, you know, in this sort of intimate setting in a theater where we had iconic Mexican, you know, cinema actors, you know, who had graced this theater before and to come full circle to that, it's almost like sacred ground yeah. to be able to have the, the, this sort of dialogue. And I've never felt that before any of the festivals most festivals are superfluous sometimes they you know i've had fun at those festivals yeah. but but we never get to the real questions and okay. then we get conf we get polluted with you know the red carpet and the photographs yeah. and the, to, the coverage loses part of the coverage loses its focus because we're waiting to see what celebrities are here and there and we still don't get to the to mm -hmm. the to the question you know and and we've answered so many great questions and reaching out to the community. I've never seen that at any of the festivals where they really reach out to the community, you know. And for for this festival to have that as part of their main focus, I was blown away. Well, wonderful. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Anything else? No, hey, make, make, it, to, make it to the second <laughs> annual Rose Marine Latino Film Festival. It's going to be big. Great. Yeah. Okay. You, he did some good ones in there. That's good. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you can cut that. Find something in there. I'm sure. <laughs> you know how many? E you know how many? You know how many of these I've done? Like EPKs. Uh, yeah. Typically, my mistake is usually I'll 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 start the answer with the question in the front, but you know I forgot about that. But oh. Anyway. Really? Or, or repeat the question. Yeah. The repeat the question in my answer. Yeah. Uh,